<laughs> Sorry. Hi, everybody. Hi. Welcome. Good to see you all. You too. Another edition of Pace Setters. I know. It's so good. I kind of look really tan today in this. My teeth look really white. They do. I mean, I don't You've know. been looking very tan <laughs> even when I saw you at um, leadership. I know. I, mean, I don't know. Maybe because I put my hair darker. Maybe it's just making me. I don't know. I, I don't even have a filter on. Like, I don't even know how to do that. So what's the other day? I'm like, did you put a filter on? I'm like, <laughs> I don't know how to do that. I mean, if it is, I don't know how it got on. There. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> One time, Melinda accidentally put some eyebrow filter on here. I didn't even know they have it. <laughs> Her eyebrows were all like. <laughs> <laughs> Did she know? <laughs> no. I don't and even we have know to, like, how to figure out like how that. to turn it off. I don't even know how you do that, honestly. But hey, let me see. If that's I can... hysterical. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Here, let me see. It says filter. Yeah, my husband. We'll, we'll have to get on on a on a zoom with a girlfriend one time and just kind of like experiment and laugh and have fun without really i don't know i really like the lighting or something man i'm like damn look good try the eyebrows the background <laughs> no filter. i don't know what's happening all that kind of fun stuff <laughs> having a good you don't need a filter jimmy you got it going no filter needed i was like man i must just be having a good day i ain't got makeup on <laughs> well you have the lashes so i do i have my lashes Rebecca, Rebecca says, Rebecca, I need all, all the filters. filters. No, you don't. Well, you don't have to teach us how to use them. We want to be prettier. Yeah. We want to look know. like you. Now I kind of want to go figure this out and figure out where the eyebrow ones are. I kind of want to see what happens with them. Oh, I see. You can add, there's already filters in here. You could do them. Let's see what happens. Are you going to put that eyebrows on? Funny. I'm going to try to figure this out because I think it'll be fun just for some entertainment. Oh, ah, what's happening? Why didn't we do that? Uh, so face call me, FaceTime call me. Oh, that's so funny. I'm like, stop it. I don't have time. Oh, what's this? Oh. <laughs> it really does have. I didn't even know there you, you could do that. I'm so excited about it. <laughs> oh, those are great. Oh, there you go. Mask. I don't see eyebrows though, but I wish I could. There try. we go. Yeah. They don't have eyebrows anymore. Oh, you're the reindeer. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I have to add eyebrows or something. Oh my gosh. This is hysterical. I'm going to do it. Now I'm going to find something. I'll be entertainment all night. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, there look you at go. Molly. Look at Molly. That's too cute. <laughs> <laughs> no, there you are. <laughs> I'm glad you told us about that. I'm like, there I'm gonna we go. go. I know. We're going to make our Monday nights a lot more exciting. <laughs> I know. Right. Right. Hey, there we go. Look at Rebecca. She's a pirate. <laughs> Arg. I, I like the pirate it. one. That got me the most. <laughs> so we all learned something tonight, right? We did. Are we you did. ready for tonight? <laughs> I mean, it's what was the homework last week? Oh, yeah, the marketing plan. Mm. Who did that? Raise your hand if you shared the opportunity. With more than one, keep your hand up. Oh. Awesome. Two, three. Mm. Oh, I love that. Four. Are you waving at me for something? Do you need me? I have a question. Oh, Look how pretty Kendall looks right now. Hey, Aww, she does. She's so cute. What are you doing? I need to go talk to Natasha about something. With Kiel and Kiel. No, go fine. get out of here. Make sure the dog. Love inside. you, Janae. Hey, make sure oh, Janae gets to shout out. Hey, make sure the dogs are inside. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Listen, it's like no one needs anything from me. I have a I question. Don't exist. Yes. So you sent you sent us um it was a PDF and it was really cool, of like a like a walkthrough of the marketing plan in a PDF form. Um how would you if you did it, how would you do that if you weren't in person to person with them? Would Can you, you that passing it on booklet? Yes. Okay. I would do it the same. I I do my share them. I, they're sitting like this on Zoom, eyeball to eyeball or over the phone. I do everything the same. It does not. Oh, do you need me to share it? Is that what you're asking me? No, to do? that's oh. what you would do. You would just share the screen so she could see oh, it. Oh, you mean if I'm wanting to show them things and I'm yeah, not? Yeah, yeah. Yes, share the screen. Yes, I understand what you're asking. I'm like, what do you mean? I say the same thing. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So <laughs> if I'm like this 
if I'm over the phone, you really can't, you know what I mean? I can email them stuff. So when I'm done with my shares, depending okay. on the personality and what I get from her determines okay. if I, which video I send her for more information. The one it says make over your life. And it's like the Mary Kay one. It has a little booklet. I send that to everybody, no matter what, because it's all personality types. But if it's, you know, like somebody, I don't know, like Kathy Hulu's I story or something like I cater that to who they are and what mm -hmm. I took away from them that I think would hit them. And then I send certain information depending on who they are. Okay. And what I feel they need. So I just have all that kind of in my arsenal, all those okay. different things, videos, everything. And I just go and I'm like, okay, she needs this. She needs that. She, I can email it. I can text it, whatever I need to do. Okay. So then you say, you know, you talk, how do you bring it up about the contest? And then you just start chatting. Like, do you say, here's my five things, or can I send you some more information? You mean when I'm done sharing what I do to send her stuff? I just say, if she's interested, I'll just say, hey girl, with your permission, I'm going to send you some more information because I feel like people need things in black and white to make an educated decision. Do you mind if I send that to you? Okay. She says, no, I send it to her. Um, how I get her to do, listen to her. I'm like, hey girl, you want to win 500 bucks? You all are making it way too difficult. You should be sharing with 10 people easily a week. Hey, do you want to go in and win 500 bucks? What is the 500 bucks? That's something I guess that I'm not involved, that we're not all involved in. So we're part of a group that, um, a group of directors and we can enter their name. So you would probably have to get with your director and um, Rebecca, I don't remember what the site's called, but we all just kind of set up and then we all turn in our names and we all participate like monies and stuff. And then. It's not that many though. I don't, I don't know how many all actually are participating. It's not that many though. And every, all our people's names go in and they do a drawing for sometimes they'll have 500 plus some gift cards if there's more people participating, but yeah. So, and it doesn't have to be $500. If you yourself want to create something, I forever would say, you want to go in and win a massage? Girls, when I do 30 shares in a month, it's worth me to give away an hour massage to somebody. I promise you there's five recruits and 30 shares. I don't care how bad you suck at sharing the opportunity. It's law of numbers. Like you don't have to have everything perfect. It's law of numbers. So sometimes, you know, when people are like, oh, I don't have anyone to share with. BS. I guarantee you if I run across your people and I share with them, ask yourself, are they going to do Mary Kay? Did you make a judgment call for them? Because I'm sorry about it, friends. You don't get the right to do that. And so I, when I kind of learned that and got taught that, I, I share with everyone. And I love the fight. I just happen to be part of that. I love doing that. I'm like, they're like, yeah, what do I got to do? I'm like, I don't know. You got an opinion, right? I'm like, yeah, I'm like, great. I'm going to share some stuff about Mary Kay. Nothing else. I'm getting referrals, sales, parties. I'm growing my business deep and wide just from those calls. So take mm -hmm. yourself out of it. It's not always about getting team members. It's about giving them the best service. Cool. Also, I you. only did. Oh. It, it doesn't cost. A I only did one share this. Oh, go ahead, Rebecca. What were you saying? I think Jerry was trying to talk. Sorry, I took that from you, Jerry. But I just wanted to say it doesn't cost the consultants a dime to do that. It costs your sales director. She puts in the money for you, and when your person wins five hundred also win 500 that's all yeah cool <laughs> and you don't have to be part of that your director doesn't have to be part of something like that your unit might be doing something different like we do you know the giveaways and you yourself listen to me you're a business owner it's okay for you to have deductions and things like that to go do that if you want to share with 30 women because you need five team members this month go away and massage I mean, whatever you think would get them to do it. It doesn't, or you can give away a hundred dollar gift card or something. You can do whatever you want. Hey, you want to win a massage? Hey, you want to live, win a gift card? It's real simple. So I think another thing really quick, Jenny, that Jenny does that I've listened to her over the years is um, she, she literally tells the person when she's asking them, Hey, you know, can you listen to this information? Do you want to win some money? But she literally tells them, I'm just teaching you how, how to best support me in my business. Like she's not asking them to sign up. She's sharing with them. I want to share with you how you can best support me in my business. So that might be easier than, you know, asking somebody, Hey, you know, do you want to listen to this information? I'm 
whatever it is, you know, we all got our, our days where whatever, like, creeps us up but that's also something that you can just say hey I just want to share with you how you can best support me and my my Mary Kay business and support themselves I tell them all you need to know now compensations have changed and our company is is different how to benefit yourself best as a customer Mm -hmm. with our products I think that's very important too so just get out of your own heads and go do it I'm so proud of you girls for doing the sharing and doing all that this everybody turn their weekly summaries how are you, are you seeing things change with that? Sometimes we think we're doing a lot of Mary Kay and we're not like our income's not like, you know, the activity is like, Oh, maybe not. So I, for me, it always makes, at least for my part, I'm like, okay, I, I did make money or I don't know if you're making money, you're happy. I don't care if it's two bucks or 2000, but the other thing too, I noticed when I did mine, I've always done them was, well, not the first week, but after that I started doing them, but I was like, Oh, Sometimes I might think a lot of things, but I'm not doing a lot of things. Does that make sense? And that weekly accomplishment sheet really kind of makes sure that you're putting your activity in the right spot. So I love, anybody have any, I don't know, feedback from their week or excitement they want to share real quick, or I don't know, maybe from reading the book, something that was your takeaway for this week? Actually, I do. This pay setters class has started me to get motivated. And all the competitions and stuff we have, it motivated me. The lady I shared with today was my first share, and I was so enthusiastic about it. She signed up, and she told me, I'm not going to sign up. I'm just going to do this for you, but I'm not signing up. And and she signed up, my very first share. <laughs> That's amazing, Jerry. But, That's awesome. So awesome. But the enthusiasm, I've, I've, I've noticed that the enthusiasm gets everybody. They get excited about it, whether they're excited about it or not. It just gets, it, it rolls downhill. Exactly. It's to- contagious. That's like Janae said, exactly. Yeah. Well, and they don't know what they don't know. They can say, I never want to do Mary Kay. I'm never going to do Mary Kay. Well, they might know old things about Mary Kay, right? They may not know. So yeah, that probably is their feeling. It's no different than if someone said, Jenny, you want to eat some shark? I always use this. I'm like, no, mm -mm, no, absolutely not. I don't want to eat that. I don't know. It tastes like it could be amazing. But if someone put that in a stew and I just happened to eat it, and then I got told later, I'm like, okay, I'm probably, I don't know. I didn't know what I didn't know. I thought it was going to be disgusting, but apparently I like shark. Didn't even know. I would eat that again, right? You just don't know. And so I think it's really, really important that we just share no matter what. So Awesome. It so is awesome. does everybody got pen and paper? Well, make sure you have that white. Does anybody else want to share anything before we get started? Yeah, Lisa. Hi, everybody. Hope everybody had a fantastic week. Um, as Jenny, uh, I don't know, we were doing one of our challenges and Jenny would post in there. She made a decision. She made a decision. Well, Lisa made a decision to submit for DIQ March 1st. So. Oh, yes! Woo-hoo! Super excited! That's amazing. Don't look so sad. This is a joyous occasion. Look, when I told when I told our team on Tuesday, I had to start crying because <laughs> it's scary. But um, yes. I believe that, that God is amazing and he'll do exceedingly and above more than what I ever would imagine. So mm-hmm. March 1st. Yeah, Janae better get her running shoes on. She's going to have to run right beside you. Every person you get, she's going to have to get. <laughs> That's why you saw me getting all my medals with recruiting when Janae was in DIQ. I'm like, I got to match that. So. <laughs> That's awesome. Yay. Does anybody else have any takeaway or anything they want to share? I don't know about you guys, but February has been rocking for us this month already. Okay. Well, we're going to. Uh, Susan, do I need to make you the host? No. I didn't know if you had anything you had to share or anything like that. Or just I mean, I do it. have stuff to share. I have I created kind of like a link and an email, but I think it would be better to just send that to you after and then you everyone could go through it more. Do you know what I'm saying? Versus go through it together at the same time. And hey, I'm gonna mute myself, friend. So and I'm spotlight you. Okay. 
and you can take it over. Listen, right. this lady is just a natural born teacher. So you all get your pen and paper and be ready. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Get your pen and paper. Okay. We're talking about a money-making toolkit. And when I thought, when I thought about this class and I looked at the, you know, um, something beautiful brochure, it was, or magazine, it was all about inventory and money decisions. And then I started thinking about money. What am I going to teach about? And then I thought, oh my God, there's all this stuff, you know, money manifesting, money goals, debt, profit, all, all this crazy taxes. And so I decided on seven, what I call money isms for your Mary Kay business that I think that when you use them and employ them, you will find money and it will bring money to your business. So I'm calling this planning for success as well. Um, and so that's really what it is, planning for success and money matters. So I have, these are the money isms. Number one, when you take care of your money, more money will come. Number two, attract number grows. Number three, simple. Can you go slower? So we can yes. write it down. Sure. We need to write it down. Start with yeah. one again, please. Number one. one again. Yes. When you number one, when you take care of your money, more money will come. When you take care of your money, more money will come. Number two, a tracked number grows. Now I'm sending you an email. I have to correct some typos. So you'll get it all printed out. So you can take notes today, but you don't have to like write everything down. Um, number two is attract, number grows. Number three, simple is the best way. Number four, inventory helps everything. Number five, taxes can be your friend. Number six, only when you know your dreams can you fund them. Only when you know your dreams can you fund them. And number seven, it's not the hours, but the business perspective that matters most. So I'm going to go through that. Okay. Number one, when you take care of your money, more money comes. Okay. In my opinion, this money is a means that you are willing to do the things that will manifest money and income for yourself. You will work your Mary Kay business, track your sales and expenses. Smart choices will make your life easier and help you fund your dreams. It doesn't have to be difficult and it doesn't have to take a whole lot of time. But when you take care of your money, more money comes. Number two, attract number grows. This is a longstanding expression that to me means when you focus on tracking toward a goal, you actually reach it. When you want a certain amount of sales and track towards it, or you track towards number of faces, say, or daily efforts, you get what you track. I believe it has not only to do with the focus of tracking, but also your brain manifesting what you want and God blessing your efforts. I never quite heard it said before, but Rebecca said, I think it was last week, something about God's hands, giving him something to do work with or something. And that just is exactly true. Um, so. My recommendation, how to manifest money, set a sales goal, make a plan, get a clipboard out and count every sale. I like to do it. I like to put her name next to her sale. Now I'm not, you do a summary sheet. Yes. But this is like tracking your total sales. This is like getting excited about every person. This is like being able to take a picture of it and send it to your director or send it to your best girlfriend because, oh my gosh look, it's only three days in the week and look what I've done or look how close I am to my monthly goal. This is exciting stuff, okay? I think that when you track and you make it exciting, you're more likely to do it. So I put it on a clipboard, okay? So you can count all your sales, what you've done and keep track of it. You might have more than one page. You might do more than one column, but you can do it. And so what I've included in that email for you is a tracking sheet like this says February, see, for every month of the year. And then at the, there's one that you can write down what your sales were for January and what your sales were from February. And you can write on it and you can keep track and you can get excited about where you're going in your business because 
attract number grows. So set a sales goal, set a star goal. And remember, if you get a setback, you just keep tracking. You don't change the goal, just the deadline, and you just keep tracking, right? Okay, just like in, in Finding Nemo, just instead of just keep swimming, it's just keep tracking. Um, okay, so I also included in the email for you um, a really cute little, what I call business on the move tracker. And it's just a way for you to count how many contacts or new people or people that you've you know talked to about booking. And also this, it's really cute. If you like smiley faces to be able to count how many people you shared the product with either online or in person, and then how many people you talked to about the company. So just again, a fun way because what's when it's pretty and fun and you can put it on a clipboard, you're more likely to track it and the track number grows. Um, I also included my version of a sales summary sheet just because I like it. And I wanted to show you a quick thing on how I do it, okay? I get a binder every year and in it, I put my sales summary sheets. Now I know you can do it online, I know. I know you can, but you can't see it online. You can't print them all out and look at them at the same time. But the coolest thing about this is that you have a pocket folder. So the copy of her sales ticket goes here and then your sales go there. And when you give away product like for gifts or birthdays or whatever, you can put that in here as well as you put it on this form over here under giveaways and stuff so that you have all of your tickets and all of your sales summaries in one place on a shelf and you don't have to worry about where it goes and you can just put it in the box with that year's taxes or whatever and you have everything you need and it's in one place and easy to find highly recommend the binder and you just keep track with it another thing that i highly recommend is making a little customer book okay um this book just it's it's what I have in it is like my customers lists of birthdays. I also have in it my customer list. When I do PCP, the PCP list. And then I also just include any other kind of papers about customers. I always have a lookbook and some order forms in there so that when um, I'm talking to somebody, you know, I have easy access to write her up a ticket when she tells me what she wants. I also have postcards in here. So you're going to the doctor, you're going somewhere, you're sitting in a car, you're waiting, you're going somewhere, you have a customer book that has everything you need in it that you could do while you're waiting or that you know where everything is in your customer, customer taken care of because what? A track number grows. Um, here's what the cute little thing for all the year long sales looks like. So you can get excited about tracking your year long sales. Okay, so the next ism is simple is most often the best way. I'm not a fan of difficult, I'm a fan of simple. We know you have to track things like sales and taxes. You have to do odometer readings. You have to do expense totals. But my recommendation is find your way to make it simple and just do it that way. Don't overthink it. The definition of overthinking is when you're, what you think it's in the way of what you want. And we don't want that to happen anymore. What you think is not gonna get in your way. I know that when you learn something new, especially when you talk about money or when you talk about tracking and expenses and taxes, it's easy for your brain to get kind of bonky and your eyes get glazed over and you're like, oh, all right. But you know, just the other day, my husband was telling me about how to do something with the cows. And I was like, what? that sounds so hard. Like, what are you talking about? I didn't even understand what he was talking about. It was like, oh my God, really? But then when I went to actually do it, it was so simple. So again, find your way to simple, find your way to easy, practice a way of doing things until it, this is the easy way. Now, you know, I'm going to have recommendations. Your director is going to have recommendations and, and check those out, you know, because we know what we're doing. We have years of experience. I have years of experience of doing it the wrong way. I have years of experience of being unorganized because I'm kind of basically an unorganized person and I'm definitely bordering on ADD. So the systems that I've developed helped me bring order out of chaos. So hopefully they'll help you too. But the recommendation really is for you to just find your way to simple, find your way to easy. 
Okay, then number four, inventory helps you in multiple ways. Okay, now when you look in the find something beautiful or start something beautiful book, there's lots of information Mary Kay gives you about inventory and business decisions and all of that. And in the great start book and your director can give you all that kind of information. But what I want you to know here is inventory is your friend. Seriously, you need inventory. And the more you have, the better. All right. This is a business. You have a Mary Kay boutique. When you have physical inventory, you have a physical store. So look at, look, cute little picture, see? Milk, eggs. What if you went to the grocery store and they didn't have it and they said, we'll order it for you? No. Okay. So these are some of the reasons why inventory is very important. One, cosmetics is an impulse buy. Having the product to show and sell and demo online or in person or even in a basket significantly increases your chances for purchase. And the sooner people get what they want, the better it is. Better it is. It, it's just a fact. People will buy more when they see the products. Even if you're doing Facebook demos, if you're showing them the real product, people will more likely buy. There's just no question. Seriously, no question. Inventory is significant for you. You will make so much more money and have so much more sales when you work your inventory, when you have inventory. Okay. And you work your business, of course. You can't just have it sitting on the shelf. All right. Number two, we have a consumable product. People run out of it. It washes off their face. They take their mascara off every night. The sooner they can get it when they run out of it, the better. Heaven forbid they have to wait on you and they go to the store and get something else because, you know, they couldn't get it from you. Number three. Mary Kay Ash is brilliant. You know she is, but she knew that having an opportunity for inventory would be everything for us. So that you can create your beautiful store and include all the boutique items. And Mary Kay also knew that investing in a business would increase your accountability to it. When you make an investment in your business to make it succeed, it's gonna make a difference for you. That's why Mary Kay starts giving you deals as a new consultant when you order 600 or more because she knows that making that investment will increase likelihood that you will have success. When life gets distracted and doubts creep in, the investment and the commitment that you make will keep you going, will keep you working and keep it building for you. So Mary Kay was brilliant. She really helped us. That's what sets us apart. We are not like all the other companies. We have our own individual personal boutique. And I highly recommend that you get all the boutique items and they everything you need. And when people come over and they can see it is even better. Now you may not live in a house where people can come in and see the product on the shelves, but if you can make it so they can see the product, maybe just have some baskets around or have bins that you know someone's coming out, you just, Pick that basket out of the bin from the, from the other room and put it in the living room so people can see product and make such a difference when they come in, not just at a party, but like looking at what else you have. Oh, what else do you, what else do you have? Okay. So I cannot stress enough that building a business and having a business is having inventory as well. And in the beginning, it can be harder to make money just so you know as you're struggling to learn and grow your customer base and perfect your skills. But the longer that you're in Mary Kay, the easier it is to make money because of that whole reorder thing. And without question, you make more money when you have products on hand. We really have a great business. Just want you to remember that too. One that helps women look and feel beautiful about themselves, which is like the most important thing in the world, in my opinion. And then you get to make money as they consume the product. How cool is that? So don't think small and don't think just right now. Think future, think ahead, plan for success. Now, Mary Kay says, yes, exactly. You can always make money no matter what. I had a girlfriend who her son had this major fiasco using the service and a major fiasco with his checking account and all that kind of stuff. And and she had to get deposited like money into his account in another state um, within two days. She had to come up with a thousand dollars in order to cover everything because he was overseas and everything would have bounced for him. And um, 
she went out and just worked her business, took, sold that money and was able to do it all because she had inventory and she turned it into money right then and there. So again, it's, it makes a huge difference. Okay, now, little money-making toolkit. To keep your inventory adequate and your money managed, remember that half of your sales is for the cost of the product. And Mary Kay always recommended that we use the 60-40 rule. Once you've acquired enough inventory to support your business, you deposit all your sales money into your four business account. It doesn't have to be a business account. So you don't have to pay extra fees, but it has to be a four business account. So go to a, a bank that doesn't charge any fees at all. And that gives you a 24 hour grace for overdrafting is a perfect bank in my opinion. Um, but anyways, use 60% of your deposits then to replace your needed inventory and pay for your sales materials. And then 40% is left for business expenses and to pay yourself. So 60-40 is your building a business friend. So remember that number. Okay, speaking of friends, the next moneyism on my list is taxes can be your friend. Repeat after me, taxes are beautiful. Um, they really are friends. Okay, let's talk about why. Number one. Taxes make you do things you should already be doing, like tracking and adding up your sales, keeping simple customers and counting up and paying attention to your expenses. You can spend too much toward your business sometimes in, in expenses, but you won't know unless you're totaling them up for taxes. Or maybe you're not spending enough. Maybe you're realizing that maybe if I spent more in this area, I would you know, get more money. But you wouldn't know if you weren't paying attention. So taxes really make you do things you already should be doing. And then two, they can help with tax deductions, which is a very big deal. I think it's actually a, a, another source of income in Mary Kay because uh, as a small business owner, we're allowed a whole bunch of tax deductions for that business to help build it. As we build relationships, we build our business and we can get rewards for it. So there's a whole bunch of tax deductions um, that, that we can really take. And I had a girlfriend whose husband convinced her once he saw the Mary Kay marketing plan to become a director so that she could get the tax deductions and help them with their house and help them with all their taxes. And it was so amazing for her. And he, it was so true. And then she ended up becoming a director too, which was really fun. Okay. So you probably all already know this, but I'm just going to give you a couple quick starting out tax tips. All right. One, don't let people tell you because you didn't make much money or that you're primarily invested in your business that particular year that you cannot do a Schedule C, okay? That is not true. In fact, the opposite is true. If it was an investment year for you, you were getting your inventory, getting started, then you would need even more to have the tax deductions help you. Um, so use somebody who's experienced in direct sales and who is experienced in especially in Mary Kay. So if you talk to somebody and they say, oh no, you can't deduct very much in Mary Kay, then you go find someone else because they're not right. All right. Here's some tips, if you didn't already. Document your odometer reading. Go, you need to do it every January 1st, so go do it. If you didn't, back up, backtrack, okay? Then begin to record all mileage related to Mary Kay, including like trips to parties, facials, meetings, deliveries, the post office, the bank, your girlfriend's house, any store in which you purchase Mary Kay. I'm, oh, it's too far away for me to grab. Just have a little, little simple little notebook in your car. You can have apps. They have mileage apps on your phone. Or you can simply write it in your date book, like next to the appointment where you went. Number two, Mary Kay ha handles the sales tax for us. So we pay the sales tax up front when we purchase the products. And remember, we have to pay on the free products too, because we could be selling them and the state doesn't know. So we have to pay sales tax on it. Then the company handles directing the sales tax to our state. So it's super easy. But remember, when we sell the product, we recoup that pay, prepaid sales tax. But if we don't sell the product, we give it away, then we don't get to recoup that. Okay, so it's called non-recovered sales tax that we paid up front, but we didn't get to recoup. So that is on the sales summary sheet. So as you're writing on there, oh, I gave. I gave my mom or my hostess $10 of free product, but I didn't get to recoup the tax on that $10. For us, it would be 68 cents. I don't know what it is where you are. It's different everywhere. Um, so that's 68 cents now is a tax deduction for me because I did not get to recoup it. So remember that. It's a big, significant thing. 
So give away generously free product, but remember to recoup your sales tax. Number three, keep your receipts for everything. Okay, office supplies, stamps, mailing, stationery, copying, ink, everything you possibly think of that's related to Mary Clay, keep it. Okay, what I do is I just have a pretty basket in my office and all the receipts just go in there. All the bills, everything goes in there until it's full. And then I worry about filing it where it goes. And I personally like to file by category. So all my post office receipts go in one place. You know, all of my home stuff goes in another. Like I love to, I don't like to follow by file by month. That is mind boggling to me. Plus in maybe two, three months before I actually get to file. So I want to file by category. All right. Next one. Use all the products you can. Use all of Mary Kay. Please, girl, tell me your Mary Kay head to toe beautiful because one, you get it at cost and two, it, you know, you really need to. Okay. It also says here, let me read it because I could just talk without reading. Let me make sure I say it. Um, open the products as demos. Remember, demos sell more products. So open those products and show them off to others. Also, demos are fully tax deductible, including the non-recovered sales tax. You can also use your demos for yourself and save money. So count these products you open to show others and use for yourself as a demo. So when we get, say, a brand new product, okay, you take it out, use it, grab one, okay, so that you can demo. And in the beginning, if you're, if you're like financially, you're not sure, you didn't sell enough or whatever, you can use it for yourself and use it as a demo, but claim it as a demo because you get more tax deduction but, uh, benefits from a demo than you do personal use. And then, then after you fall in love with it and everything's good and you've demoed it for a while and you know you sold ten of them, so now you have extra money, um, then you can you know give yourself one for your own personal use. All right, next one. When people come to our homes for Mary Kay business, you know that you can deduct seventy five cents per person. We can't deduct coffee but we can deduct for that person who comes over for Mary Kay business, we can deduct a certain portion to cover that we may be giving them coffee and cookies. So, you know, have them sign in, write their names in a book anytime someone comes in. Portioning your cell phone, right, for Mary Kay business. Um, additional, additional deductions, I love these ones, beauty magazines, newspapers. You're in the beauty business. You need to keep up on it, girl. So now all those beauty magazines you used to love to buy, but felt like, Oh, maybe I shouldn't. Now you can. They're a Mary Kay deduction. Um, note paper, shelving, um, stationary books, like self-help books and stuff like that. Mm. Yep, all part of your business. Travel, when you go places to travel, isn't that exciting? Um, they say that if you have to sell a certain amount, about an average of $80 to $100 a day while you're there. So if you want to go visit your cousin in another state, um, and you're going to be there for five days, sell $500 at one party, and then your whole trip is covered. If not, you may have to ask your tax accountant for what portion would be covered if you didn't totally sell that much. Of course, if you, um, they always used to say, if you recruit them, then you can get to travel and visit them as much as you want without worrying about how much you sell when you get there. All right. So I have a couple tax guides. I have one that I put together a while back with a friend of mine who's a tax, um, accountant. We went to hear several other Mary Kay people that specialized in Mary Kay taxes. And then we made our own together. Um, but I just met a woman who is a Mary Kay consultant and has an MBA in tax accounting. And she put together a booklet too. So if you don't have one already, I can totally share that or it's actually in the, no, it's in a different, a different email, but I can totally share that with you. All right. Um, number four, only when you know your dreams can you fund them. What dreams could you dust off? I mean, really, when you talk about making more money, you have to have a reason to make money because otherwise distractions, everything else can go, okay? So I want you to think, if you knew you couldn't fail, what dreams would you want to fund for yourself and your family? Pay off debt? Would you pay for a vacation? Would you buy a new car or a home? Would you remodel your house? Would you want to be rescued from your current job? Would you donate money to your church? I know a consultant who sold for six months and all the money she made in profit, she took and she secretly, like anonymously, um, bought vestments and all sorts of stuff for her church. 
Um, and it was all from her American profit. And that motivated her to work her business and build it because she didn't need the money herself. She wanted to do something good with it. Maybe you need a nest egg. Do you have a big enough one? Maybe you need one. Maybe you need to help pay for your kids or like college or put one away for them. A nest egg for your kids. You have to have a reason because we all have so many money hangups, like I talked in another class, that you could easily just talk yourself out of working. And one of the reasons why we work is money. So have a good reason. Have a, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with the money? So you can't have a dream to fund. I mean, you can't have a dream come true um, until you know what, that, what it is. Then you can fund it. Okay. Now, I want um, you to... Uh -huh. I'm missing a couple pages here in my notes. Oops. Um, I do want to tell you that I used to be a nurse. Okay. And I, while I'm talking, I'm just going to scroll through to my on the computer notes because I'm missing a couple pages here. Hang on, let me just get to it. Okay. Then number seven was, it's not the hours, but the perspective that matters most, okay? This is a huge moneyism, and this is gonna help you in more ways than you can imagine, or I hope it does anyway. Okay, when I worked as a nurse, I got paid pretty good for an hour, but I only got paid once, one time for that hour. They didn't call me and say, you know, Susan, two months ago, you worked an hour, so we're gonna give you another hour. I'm going to give you more money for that. Or five years ago, you worked that hour when you were so busy that night in intensive care. We're going to pay you again for that. No, no, they never do that. But in Mary Kay, they do. In Mary Kay, when you work an hour developing a customer and helping her, you get paid for that hour over and over and over again. I have some hours that I worked 10 years ago, I'm still getting paid on. 20 years ago, I'm still getting paid on. And sometimes it just takes five minutes to put product in a bag. And that was from an, an hour I spent with a customer a long time ago. So I want you to gain this wonderful, fabulous perspective that Mary Kay is just amazing. I mean, I'm sure you already believe that, but that Mary Kay is just the ticket to everything. You understand? Because not only can you make crazy money when you do an hour, but you get that consumable business. You get that hour paid over and over again. You get to build relationships for a living and then have it fund dreams. You get to be around positive, wonderful women and then make money at it. I have had people come over and purchase $400 worth of Mary Kay and hug me on the way out the door saying, thank you so much. I feel so great. This is wonderful. And I had to like totally bite myself and bite my lip from going, <laughs> thank you, you know, and I mean, I did say thank you, but you know what I mean? Like it was the coolest thing that, that I was making business, making money, doing this business, helping other women to look and feel more beautiful. So I want you to remember that, right? And it's not really about how much time you spend in Mary Kay. You can work hobby hours. I gotta look up here because my papers, I, I'm missing a couple papers. Um, you can work hobby hours and still make a lot of money and win prizes. But if you have a hobby perspective, your income is not gonna be as great as if you have a business perspective. The time you spend is not as important as your perspective. If your focus is on helping and building women, success will come. The products will simply sell themselves. And if you are in front of people, you will sell products. And if you have product on hand, you will sell more. And if you track what you sell, you will sell more, right? And if you know what you want to sell it for, you will sell more. And if your systems are simple, you will sell more. So it all keeps coming back around, right? And um, it's all in how you look at the business. So now listen to me on this. If you got just one new customer every single week, you'd have 52 at the end of the year. If every customer orders an average of say $100, now I'm sure it's way more than that. It all depends on where you live and who the customer is and you know whether they're impacted by COVID or not impacted by COVID. But let's just say 100 because it's, it's probably more, 
probably triple that, but let's just say a hundred because I like to look at low numbers and then make them mind boggle me. And then everything else is a gift. So let's just say a hundred. That would be 5,200 in sales just from that. So let's say you worked enough to get a new customer every week this year. And the next year you kept doing that. So now you have double because you have all the customers you got last year and then all the customers you get this year. And now you're talking about a hundred. And so now a hundred customers buying reorders, just the reorder part, not the initial purchase part is what? About a thousand dollars? I mean, $10,000. Okay. So now you have 10,000 in sales. And then what about if you, they spent a hundred in their first one. So now you have 15,000 in sales. And so do you see how it grows and it just keeps growing? Okay. So did you know, let's look at different numbers. Did you know, or did you realize that if you added two to three new customers per week, that would give you over a hundred at the end of the year. And if your customers reordered on average, hundred to 200 a year, that could bring you 10,000 to 20,000 in reorder sales. And if through new sales and consistent appointments, you could sell $400 a week, that could potentially bring you 20,000 in new sales. Now let's add those numbers together. That's 40,000 in sales. And did you realize that if you added two new customers, now let's go back for a minute. Sorry, I progressed too fast. Two to three new customers. This isn't like full-time work here. This is hobby hours with a business perspective. Okay, did you realize that if you added two new customers a week, like I said, for five years in a row, you would have more than 400 customers, allowing of course for some drop-offs. And that 400 times 100 to 200 average in potential reorders equals more than 40,000 in reorders, just in reorders. So remember when I said, when you were talking about inventory, think big and think for the future, don't think just now. Think about what you could do if you worked your business consistently for five years. Look where you could be. Consistency is key. Plus, like Jenny pointed out, chat with each of those new customers and share the perks of our opportunity. And you could potentially be adding new team members, team commissions, bonuses, prizes, and more to your income. So my opinion, did you know that 10 is a magic number? A starting magic number anyway, okay? Give yourself five hours of face-to-face -face time per week with new and existing customers and five hours of what I call accessory time, which is like booking, customer care, sales and sales, advertising efforts, education, office and inventory work. Now, if you don't wanna do some of that, you could delegate it out. You could have a secretary do some of that stuff. But if you're looking at it straight ahead or have your kids, you know, Rebecca said to her kids were like her secretaries for years, I know that my husband and my kids, um, Jay, not so much anymore because, you know, he's a teenage boy and he's into five zillion things, but my husband helps me do a lot of stuff and sometimes Jay, but anyways, five hours of face-to-face -face time and five hours of accessory time. So I think what happens is we get caught up in either the accessory time and we don't do enough FaceTime. Or we do FaceTime, but don't do accessory time. And so we either burn ourselves out or we don't keep what we have because we don't follow up or we don't, we don't do the things that encourage reorder business and stuff. And so we don't get the benefits of both. So five hours of face-to-face, -face, five hours of accessory time and watch what could happen to your business. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So when you look at it this way, can you see the value here? Can you see how it's all in the perspective? Now, 10 hours a week might not be hobby for you. That might be you know, a, a more than you could do, 
but then you just split it into two and a half hours of FaceTime and two and a half hours of accessory time. Or say you want to build your business and grow and you can find 20 hours, then you do 10 hours of face-to-face time and 10 hours of accessory time. It's, it doesn't, it's your choice. It's Mary Kay, your way. But look at the numbers here. Look at the numbers. And I think that when you see what you could have, when you did something like this on a consistent level and you roll it back around with the other moneyisms I talked about, um, you know, tracking your numbers and when you, you know, take care of your money, money is going to take care of you and keeping it as simple as you can, but excitedly tracking things and you have lots of inventory to, of course, satisfy your customers as well as to make you accountable and make you feel like a business owner, right? Because it's all in how you feel. And when you feel successful and powerful, you will be more. And of course, what dreams those are funding. So my challenge, and I guess my homework for you is that I want you to look at all these things that I've done. And I want you to talk to your family. I want you to talk to your family about a goal and what dreams could you fund? And they could be tons. They could be one. You know, um, we sat there and we wrote down all the places we wanted to go. You know, all the vacations you wanted to kind of got curtailed recently with COVID, but all the different places we want to go. And then we talked now about getting a car for my son. And then we talked about remodeling one of the buildings we have on the farm so we can have parties here. And I'll invite y'all. Invite y'all come and you can stay. Okay. Um, so those are our dreams. So we know what we want to fund. So we know, and every time we get money, we can put it in there and, you know, count it up. You know, or my one girlfriend who has does Mary Kay very spare time, she takes a certain amount of sale uh, sales money per sale every time she gets a sale. I think it's a dollar a sale, um, but you could do anything. It could be purse of the week, and she sticks it in a jar. She takes it out of her wallet and sticks it in a jar for every single sale she gets, and then she buys something with it, or she spent buys purses. She bought shoes with it, or she puts it in in a, in a jar so that she can do something fun at the end. You know, other people have done that. Um, so, but you can't fund a dream if you don't have a dream. So you got to find it, um, and then pro- so that's one. So talk to your family, talk to whoever you want to talk to, come up with some concrete things you're going to fund with your Mary Kay money. So what will it be? You know, and if you, if you need to pay off debt, then figure out what that total is and then figure out how much you need toward that total and how much reasonably you could put in it. Do you know that if you just put $200 or even a hundred, but let's say $200 extra every single month toward a debt, how the significant difference that'll make in the whole compounding thing. <laughs> I love your shoes, you know. Um, write down some things you want to buy. What do you want to buy with your American money? Write it down, know it, whether it's shoes or not. Okay. Um, and then the other thing is I want you to get some of your taxes and tracking set up. Okay. So I want you to get clipboards where you can put track your sales. I want you to make your binder or do something similar. Okay. I want you to make your customer book so that you can keep everything together. And I want you to start thinking taxes are my friend and a track number grows. And I want you to know that there's a lot of money to be had in this business and dang it, girl, you can do it. You can make as much money as you want to. Wow. Is everybody head spinning? My head spin. I'm like, I want the book. I'm a book girl. I probably, I'm kind of like a bag lady too. So I probably like things like that. I don't know. Just maybe that's what you said. Maybe I border on ADD and that like, it makes it all in its own little special spot. And that's how I can keep it straight. Okay. Suzanne's, she's going to send me everything. Okay. Um, I have the email where I kind of wrote it out. Like what I did was I wrote out my class in an email so that it would help me keep on track. And then you could always just read it again. Mm -hmm. Um, But as I looked at it, there's just a few things I need to like, my, I had some spelling errors and stuff on grammar errors. So I just There's no. need to fix that, but it'll all go out. Um, and while I was doing that, Jennifer, you know, the money manifesting class that I did for the first lunch and learn that I did, 
Yeah. Uh, I put that together with oh, the video yeah. and with the money affirmations that I gave all of you guys afterwards. I put it in together in an email, which is also there's like a landing page on the email because it's in bomb bomb. So you could post that in your your consultant, your unit group, or I could post it in the unit group. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then I have one that I did for my unit that's just taxes. Okay. Like it's yeah. mind boggling because taxes can be mind boggling. Yeah. But yeah. I do have that with just the taxes. Would you put that in a, uh, or are you on our pay sitter, our little pay sitter Facebook page? If not, yeah, I keep forgetting about the Facebook, Facebook page. Well, if you don't put, if you'll email me, I have everybody on email, send that out, make sure I'll, obviously directors can forward on whoever else they need it to. And then post there, or I will, I mean, either way I'll copy and paste and do so right. no rush when you get a chance, you all wrote down your homework, right? You know what to do. I know we're hitting our hour, so we won't talk long. I want you working on that homework. If you don't see your girlfriend look side to side, if you don't see her today, and you know, go make sure she's okay and make sure she's here next week and she's mm -hmm. on your weekly meeting because she may need this, right? So <laughs> you get a little off kilter. And so, you know, go get her, bring her along. Um, Because this was powerful and I think everybody needs to be part of that. So, Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank gonna, you. Our genius teacher, genius teacher. She really is. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do the, high, I'm the high point pirate oh, yeah, tonight. I'm sorry. Arr. Do it girl. <laughs> On it real quick. Let's go. So first of all, thank you, Susan. Um, that was great training. I, I didn't have a moment where I wasn't like taking a note. So I hope you guys all were too. And there's so much to be said about what she talked tonight. Attract number grows. By the way, she talked about beauty magazines being deductible and things like that too. Ask your tax person, but I always deduct Sirius XM radio because I listened to, I said, Hey, I listened to music that pumps me up on my way to my parties. And I also listen to the business channel. Try to prove. So anyway, my auditor accepted that just so you know, you got to ask your guy. And then I love that she said to deduct um, your personal use products as demos and that, that later you could use them as personal product, personal write-offs or, you know, personal use. I never do. Cause I stay curious about the product. So they're always demonstrators. I'm curious. Is it still working? I think so. <laughs> um, <laughs> so do that. And then, um, I love that she said travels deductible. And if you have a team member, wherever you're traveling to, you don't have to worry about the sales. It's deductible because you're there for training. Um, I have so many unit members, probably, I mean, at least a dozen who are personal use team members who I still go travel to see. And we do a party every time I go. So that's deductible. Um, I loved all of that. And one thing that I really loved that Susan shared tonight was uh, sharing with your family, your goals, and you don't know how long that's or how far that's going to take you. Taylor today brought me to tears. We went out and did some errands and, you know, whatever else we were doing. And she called Bo and she's like, Hey, should I give my mom her gift now? And I was like a gift. What, what do I get a gift for? Like, it's, I, it's not my birthday. It's not mother's day. I'm about to be a, I'm about to be a sugar mom again, but what am I getting a gift for? So she gives me a gift bag while Bo's on the phone. He already called Gary and asked him if it was okay. Not that he needed to do that, but anyway, she gave me Disney world ears and she is taking me to Disney world at the end of May. I am blown away by her, you guys. It's that abundant mentality. It's the goals. It's the things that Susan talked about that we did years ago that implemented those things into her, her fertile mind that grew into the woman she has become today. We are best friends and she's taken me to Disney World for five days. How fun is that? Her and Bo. Anyway, I just think that's so cool. So now your high point pirate is gonna, oh, Jenny, did you get this? I think she had to go. Jenny Enlow. Okay. Janae's the host yeah. now. Yeah. I'm we got our scarves from Scotland for being on target my, for the Scotland I trip. I heard you. I got Oh, it. Mary Kay gave that to you? Wow. Yeah. Jenny, I, I, I know. I've never, I said, oh my God, I don't even know what to do. I'm on target for a trip. I've never been on target for a trip. Jenny, did you get yours? Yes. Mine is here. Okay. I'm having hot flash and sweats tonight. I think I'm sick. I'm just going to be transparent or I'm getting sick, but I can't because I have a facial in the morning. So I've been wearing this all night waiting, ah, but isn't it fun? Oh 
my gosh, I love all the stuff they give us. All right, you guys ready? Because we have two minutes for our hour. Get your pens and paper ready. And here's what we're doing tonight. If you took notes tonight, give yourself 500 points. If you have your unit calendar, your unit events from your director, your sales director written in your date book so that you can participate in those things and tie in, give yourself 500 points. I believe that's so important. Um, those who show up, go up. And when you start disconnecting yourself from things, guess what? You start falling backwards. So um, if you read three chapters in the Mary Kay autobiography, give yourself 300 points. And thank you everyone for being on tonight. There's so much you can be doing on a Friday night. Um, if you shared the opportunity this week, as Jenny challenged you to do, give yourself a hundred points per share. So if you shared with three, that'd be 300. If you shared with one, it's 100. If you added a new team member to your team this week, since last week, last, uh, pay setters, give yourself 500 points per team member that you added to your team. That's exciting. I don't know if y'all know this about Jenny Inlow. But she bronze medal last month. She added four new team members and four new unit members to her unit. She's maximizing her uh, <clears throat> her paycheck because she gets a hundred dollar bonus on each personal team member she uh, com that comes into the company that's qualified, and she gets four hundred when she has four units. So she's like, I am not waiting for anyone to do it for me. I'm gonna do it myself, and she does. So when she talks to you about team building, I hope you have your listening ears on because she ain't wrong. Um, so 500 per team member you added, did you do your homework last week? Every single thing that Jenny and Lowe told you to do last week, did you write it down and did you complete it? You know what it is. If you did that, give yourself a thousand points. Okay. I love this. We are area 309. There is a reason for that. And it's really funny, but it's the three plus three plus three plus 300. So that equals 309. What is the three plus three plus three plus 300? Do you guys know what that is? Does everybody on here know what that is? How do I do? Okay, <laughs> tell us, Janelle. That is going to be three parties, three uh, interviews, $300, and three new referrals. Three Three referrals. That's right. We added the referrals. Three referrals. It's, 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 I think we didn't add it. I think that's how it was when I was a new consultant 29 years ago and they took it away. And it's so important. Oh, okay. So it's to get three referrals at every party. That seems so small, right? But the key is to follow up with them as well. So you yeah. would have 12 by the, or nine by the end of the week. Isn't that amazing though? It's if you that... do your math. We have 12. Let's go 12. I know, right? Okay, well, my math doesn't always work unless I'm on the high side, then it works. But anyway, <laughs> that's why we became Area 309 because Jerry <laughs> and Vanessa Gwynn held up the three. We asked what that was and they held up 309. And I was like, are they texting each other? That's not even close. But the math equals 309. Three plus three plus three plus 300 is 309. And we died laughing when that happened. So that's how we became that's Area fun. 309 because we're building our, our national areas on 309, which is three plus three plus 300. So not just getting those three referrals from every party, but also following up with them is so key to this business. Um, so if you did your 309 this week, give yourself 5,000 points. I'm going to tell you right now, that is what a big deal. The 309 is. They told me when I was a new consultant, all those years ago, if I would do that week in and week out, I would earn a free car or I would earn it. The use of a car. They used to say free car. It's not really because you work for it. So if you did that 5,000 points, now, you know, every week, if I'm the high point pirate, I'm going to be giving you points for that. Cause I know that it works. And that is a part-time level, just like Susan talked about. If you had built to hundred customers by the end of the year, that's from doing, you know, that many faces in a week. And then it turns into a month. I don't know if you guys realize this too, a 309 every week, when you multiply by four is the power start plus and it's, it's part-time. So add your points. And I loved what Jessica said a couple of weeks ago. She said her eighth graders were apathetic or she was apathetic toward them because they needed challenged in order to move forward. So Susan gave you your homework this week, but here's something I want you all to think about whether or not, well, Janelle, will you get our points tonight? Yeah. 
Okay. Whether or not you're challenged every week by your sales director or this pay setters group to do the three plus three plus 300, three plus three plus three plus 300. I challenge you to do that every week in your business. Okay. That's all you need. You can always say, I've been given a challenge by my sales director or by my, my girlfriend to do this because it's a standing challenge. Do it every week. Don't wait for someone to challenge you this week. Uh, Latasha, Janae, I think said Latasha got a new team member. Jerry got a new team member. You were challenged to share this business. Do it like it's your J-O-B. Based on how you're working your Mary Kay business right now, would you hire you? Today, I wouldn't probably hire me, even though I just did a share and a couple other things. But um, (laughs) if I'm being transparent today, I'd probably be fired. So you know, make sure you're doing those things. Make sure you're passing the torch, make sure you're tracking like Susan talked about because a tracked number grows. And if you're tracking weight loss, a tracked number shrinks your hiney. So, Ah, okay. (laughs) We got Francis with a thousand, Lisa with 27, Jennifer with 21, Fawn with 21, Carol with 2,400 and Jerry with 2,900. Yeah. Okay, so we need Jerry. Yay! You have to send send me your a- address, your name and address, um, Jerry, so Jerry. that I can send you a gift. And the other thing I just want to add in there is when you do your homework, when you talk to your goals with your family, really get them engaged because when they're engaged, they don't mind when you go to work. They'll push you out the door. Your kids will be it's like, true. "Don't you have a facial? Aren't you supposed mm-hmm. to get me that gift? Aren't we supposed to go on vacation?" So and then later kind of they're buying you vacation. Yes. Pardon me? I said, and then later they're buying you vacations. That's right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So yay. So Jerry, my phone number, you ready? Mm-hmm. 330-717-8682. So text me so I can get your gift in the mail to you. Text me your name and address. All right, everybody. Great job. Thank you, guys. Thank Thank you you so much, Susan. You did fabulous. Oh, thank you so much. I I love seeing all you guys. Have a great week. Okay. Good night, everyone. Good Good night. night. Bye-bye. Good night. Thanks, everybody.